Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today is going to be a bit of a different episode. Um, I had this idea of um, JavaScript modules, and I thought I'd do a live, completely live um, uh, sort of demonstration of how you might add JavaScript modules to your Webflow project. So maybe a little bit of editing in here just to make it go a bit smoother, but um, I just thought I'd wing it because I know it sort of so well and I can then sort of describe to you what's going through my mind at the time um, and, and voice them. So you can kind of see where, I don't know, a, a little bit inside of uh, how, how a developer would approach a problem or how, uh, you know, walking through the step by steps. So enough rambling. What is JavaScript modules? JavaScript modules isn't a new thing. I'm not reinventing anything uh, here at all. Um, but it's something we use when you want a sort of JavaScript library, um, but you want it to kind of fire off functions only in certain pages or certain circumstances. So let's take, for example, a tab system. You want that, that every time you create this tab system component, that it fires that JavaScript only when it detects that on the page. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So stick around. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so because we, we, we delve into Webflow and the underlying code technologies, the browser technologies. We're currently on season three right now. So it's, um, it's going strong and I, I'm really enjoying doing these things. So yeah, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification will let you know that the little bell icon will let you know that when I release a video, you'll actually be notified so you don't have to go to the subscription tabs. It might help keep you abreast of things. So without further ado, let's, um, let's dive into this and see what we can do. Uh, let's just build a really basic tab system, right? Um, so, and then whenever we use this tab system, we're going to uh, fire fire the correct JavaScript to make it, you know, handle um, handle the tab system. So it's going to be really rough. I'm I'm no designer, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a, a main sort of tab body. Probably going to need three of those. If block. Oh, there we go. It's just it. Cool. Well, actually, first thing we're going to do, they're the tabs. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a wrapping um, element and we're just going to call that uh, tabs or tab, whatever. Find it here. And we're going to call this. Um, in fact, the first thing we're going to do is just sort of describe a little, um, uh, I would say, a, um, a convention that we um, use, which is to denote that this is being used for JavaScript as opposed to sort of um, in fact, actually, yeah, we'll leave it. We'll just call it tabs just for, for clean title. What I was going to say is for convention, if you're using a class that has no style attached to it, I'd recommend um, potentially looking into why you might not want to apply style to a class or how to apply a class that doesn't have style to it, um, that you know that you can remove that class and remove the JavaScript or whatever, for whatever reason you might want to do that, and it's not going to affect the styling of the of the component. Um, I'm just going to use tabs because we're going to go a different route, I think, um, uh, to, to denote whether it's a JavaScript comp component. So in here, inside of this tabs thing, we're going to have a tab body. Uh, tab body. And tab body. Cool. Um, and then we're going to have uh, an active class. If we actually will display none on the tab body, and then we're going to have an active class active, which will make it display block. Right. So essentially, I'm going to uh, when you click on one uh, link that it will um, put the active class on the relevant link to tab body sort of thing. We'll figure it out as we go. Uh, editing might be my good friend here. So we've got some tab bodies. And then if we're inside of the tabs, we have, whoops, excuse me. So inside of the body, uh, let's make sure we're in there. Tabs in here, we're going to add a list. And then within each list item, we're going to add a link. It's link, that's what we want. Okay, cool. And 
let's just keep everything link and tidy tab tab link and we can then duplicate that inside of all these and then we're going to name this tab list item tab list item tab list item okay and then we're going to go tab list cool right let's have a think about this then so we've got our move that to the top um let's just do a quick bit of styling just so that we can um get something going on um tab one tab two three okay so I need a way to link the certain tabs with the uh, links here. So we could probably add IDs to these bodies. So let's just put tab uh, one, tab two, and tab three. And why I'm doing this, right? It comes from the days where we had to uh, anticipate, which is it's still pretty important to do this, but you need to anticipate that JavaScript might not load. There might be a failure in downloading the file. There might be all number of reasons why the user might not actually have JavaScript enabled. So in this way, we, we can, in the way, well, I'm about to show you, in this way, we can um, make sure that if, if JavaScript isn't enabled, uh, that we can still use this tab system. So. If you, if you know, I'm going to utilize anchor links here. And if you don't know about anchor links, what they do is that in our link, if I put tab one here in the first link, tab two in the second link, tab three in the third link. Um, when I click these links, it will jump to where that ID is on the page, right? And it's only right next to it because we've got, we've got like a little tab system here. So what I'm what I'm going to do is use the um, the href of the link, and we'll get into that. The href of the link to then um, find which ID on the page to actually add the active class to. Um, in a no JavaScript environment, what you would do is you actually add a. Um, let's just uh, find it here. Yes, I'm using Edge because of latest Chrome news of just hogging up and make making your computer really slow. So I'm just using Edge because Edge is actually built on Chrome just without all the gumph. So what I'm gonna do is um, search Node.js class JavaScript. Um, here we go, Node.js class. There's a little article, let me just find the code. Here we go, um, inside of a script tag, so this, this will only work when there's JavaScript. So in, inside of a script tag on the document, we, we replace what we would already put a Node.js class. So in our body, on our body here, uh, we would have Node.js. And then when the page loads, only when, you know, like I say, in a script tag, it changes that class to a JavaScript class. So we know we've got access to a JavaScript class. So why not, let's just add that just for fun. Just for fun. code at the top because it's pretty important and we will save the changes but we'll leave that open um, and what we do instead of because we won't have a way of um, hiding and showing these if the J no js class is present then we would write some css and again let's just quickly do that so um if no JS class is present, then we would say, what were they called? Tab body. Uh, we would say tab body um, display lock. Okay. And then if the JS class um, was present, then we go tab body um, display none. So it hides them all. And then if we have 
Node.js tab body has the class of active on it, then we display uh, block. And I think we can actually probably leave this in here, right? Let's see, we have to wrap this in a script tag. Script, uh, sorry, style. We can actually leave this in there and that will actually work because this is exactly what we want to do. Um, obviously the downside here is that we've got the CSS in the in the custom code, whereas you probably, I don't know, it's may, maybe you'd want to uh, leave it in here, but yeah, let's let's keep it into in, in Webflow because we, we're not going to try and cover our no JavaScript solution in this video. So anyway, went a little bit off track there, but um, yeah, we're going to use the href of the of the link here to find the ID to show it um, when we click that. Right. So the basis of our module system basically will be if we um, add a attribute to the tab. So if we go data, I'm just making this up now. This can be anything. Um, I think data module is pretty good and the value is going to be tabs. We'll come back to that. But data could, you know, we need to decide a convention here. So it could be data module, it could be data component, it could be data JavaScript, it could, whatever it needs to be. It just needs to be consistent for every single component we use. Um, and we'll get back to why it's called tabs here. But basically, we have our tabs function. Let's just add some content here just so we know it's working. Uh, content one. And let's show these content two content three cool and let's make sure we've hidden those so we essentially have our tab system here right it's really basic um but it will work for our for our uh, use cases um and the I'll backtrack a little bit because this idea came to me in someone asking where the, where the best place to place uh, code and JavaScript is. Now, yes, you can place it in the page, uh, you know, at the bottom of every page, and that's cool. You can also place it in um, the embed element. Okay, where is it? Embed. You can also place it in here. The problem with that is that you've got JavaScript and you've got code kind of everywhere. Um, and one thing we try and do in, in, in development is try and keep things neat, organized and tidy. It's just it's just easier. I don't know. I mean, let me know in the comments, like how many times or how many of you have just just searching around. Where did that JavaScript go? Where did that JavaScript go? And the whole thing, the whole point here is, is that we can keep the JavaScript in one place and we won't have to worry about um, where it is. We can always just jump right to the custom code. So actually, I'm going to delete that because what I'm going to do is put it in the footer. Because, And secondary to that, the reason why we put it in the footer is because you want your page to load without j the JavaScript slowing it down. So you want to give the HTML and the CSS first so it's at least pretty. Yes, some things might not work, but you put it in the footer so it doesn't slow the load of your web page. Uh, uh, Chrome, um, the uh, Google Insights will let you know this actually, that uh, render blocking JavaScript, I think they call it. So here we go. The basis of the, um, the module system is that whenever we detect a data module uh, uh, component, well, actually, let's jump back. Let's get this tab system working with just plain old code to, to kick us off. Right, so first of all, we're gonna find our tab system on the page. And what we're gonna do is use jQuery. And um, if you haven't seen my video on jQuery or JavaScript, I'll link it in the tabs. But um, I'm gonna use jQuery because we have access to it, so we might as well use it. Um, and we are going to find our tab system. Right. In fact, we're going to go uh, data module equals tabs. And this isn't really, I mean, we've 
this isn't really the reason why we've uh, used the data module uh, and the tabs thing. I'm not really explaining it at this point. We're just, I just know we have access to it. So I'm just going to uh, do it here. Right. So we have our, we have our um, tab system. We've got access to it and we've stored it in a variable. The next thing we want to do is bind a click to the links. So we need to find the links and the way we can go um, find that is go tab links. The reason why I'm adding a dollar there is that I know this is a jQuery object. So um, this helps me identify what's a variable, what's a normal variable and what is um, jQuery objects that I know I can use jQuery functions on it. Actually, we're going to we're going to update our code because we are in 20, nearly 21 now. So I'm going to do that. Right. Let me rethink. Oh, we can go tabs dot find and then let's remind ourselves of the classes um, that we use so, so actually going back to what i was saying earlier we could go js tab link and there's our javascript uh class that we know we have access to um and that if we remove that class then we know it's linked to some form of javascript and it's not going to be um it's not going to be affected by it Thinking about the way that Webflow works, I'm probably going to just do this data tab tab link. I'm going to do something like this. I'm thinking out loud right now just because it, it, Webflow doesn't make it easy to um, add and remove classes and kind of have classes that don't act as. Um, don't act as style selectors. So I'm just trying to find a way around it. So um, data, I've forgotten what it was it already. Data tab true. Data tab link true. Data tab link true. So we're going to find uh, all elements with data tab link and those should be our tabs. What I'm going to do is console.log and I'm going to do an episode of um, how to use the console but observe at this point that I'm console logging I'm logging to the console what tabs is and what tabs link is. I'm just I'm just now making sure that I will probably need to publish. Um, probably need to make sure that we're actually getting the 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 right. Um, I need to publish this as well. The right elements. So let's just quickly publish that and view it. And what's going on here? But let's just have a look at the inspect inspector. Console, we have an error. Tabs link is not defined. I probably wrote something wrong there. I spelled something wrong. Tab links, that's why. Good. Cool. So there's our tabs, and we have three of them. And, there, and there's the actual component itself. Right, back to our code. What now we want to do, we have our tab system, right? What we want to do is we want to bind a click event to the um, tabs, um, the, well, the tab links. Let's use the right words here. We're going to use the tab links and bind a click to them, and then use and then get the value of the href and use that to find an element on the page that has the ID of whatever that href is. If it doesn't find it, we'll we'll handle that, but. Um, as a reminder, you can own ID, IDs. You can only have one instance of that ID of the page. So we can't now have another tab one, tab two, or tab three on the page. Um, that obviously causes problems if you want multiple tab systems on the um, on the on the on the same page. That's fine. We can we can of course work around that. We don't have to use IDs and we don't have to use hrefs. Just what we chose to go with at the time because there's only one you could use classes in this instance so you can have multiples of the same classes and as long as you find the class that's within this tabs and we'll go through that um 
then you won't impact any other tabs on the on the on the page so but let's just go with what we've got here and uh, let's see how what we come up with so we want to bind in fact let's let's script out what we want to do so bind click uh, click event to tab links we want to um, use um, get href and then we want to use href to find ID on page, right? Um, we want to remove the active class class on all tabs. So for, you know, if you were to slow this down like nanoseconds, you would see all of the tabs completely disappear. And then we want to bind the active class um, add sorry add active class to um, element with ID of href does that make sense um, there might be some things we, we we're missing here but let's just go through it and we will and we will um, and we'll just we'll just talk about those things as we encounter them so we want to bind to the tabs uh, links to all the tabs right and what we can do here is click and then fire off a function. And then what we can do here is just do console.log. Hello. And what JavaScript or sorry, jQuery does is that we don't have to loop through each item. In JavaScript, you have to loop through each item and then bind the click that way. Whereas JavaScript, uh, jQuery will actually just bind the click link to all of the matched elements in, in my selector there. So let's just see what's going on. In fact, what this is going to do is probably break. There we go. Hello, 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 hello. And you can see that is updating in the, in the top there, which is cool. So the first thing we want to do is if this was we we don't want we want to override the browser's native functionality of the um of the you know the click link right so we don't want it to jump around we we want it to stay where it is on the page and the way we do that is we prevent default and what's what we've just done here is that when click when we click the link, it fires this function. The, the easiest way to explain this is that the, the, the link event gives us data of the event. So um, let's console log what that looks like now. Um, and uh, if we call prevent default on that event um, data, then it will stop it, uh, stop anything do its native functionality. So if it's a link to another page, it won't go to another page. If it's a button that submits a form, actually that's incorrect, but you know, for argument's sake, button that submits a form, um, it will stop that form being submitted. Um, like I say, that last one isn't true, but um, it was just an example that popped into my head. So let's just console log what that event looks like. Here we go. You've got access to all these things. So, what do we need? What do we need access to? Actually, now that we're here, so we've already prevented default. We need access to the href of the link. Now, I can't see. I don't know about you, but I can't see href. It's all alphabetical. I can't see href here. And but what I can see is on current target, we actually have elements here. So. If I look in current target, then I get access to a whole heap of other things. So what what we've got there, actually we have a hash there. So that looks exactly what, where is href for instance? Maybe, maybe I'm misinformed, maybe there isn't a href thing. Either way, I mean, that's exactly what we want. So again, rocking back into here. So current target dot hash, save that. Publish that, give that a refresh, there we go. And that is the selector we need to um, find the element on the page. And so we're looking good. Let's store that in a variable, const um, target equals 
take that and store in a variable. Um, so bind click events to tab links. Boom, done. Get href. Boom, done. Use href to find body on page. So let's go uh, const um, body equals, and we'll use jQuery here. Um, e will use the target because we know that's a string flopping back here because we know that's a string that's uh, tab uh, one we can just pass it directly and what jQuery allows you to do is pass the context of uh, the so, so we don't want to search the whole entire document for this target this um, ID so what we can do we can pass it a context element which in this case will be that and we can well I mean we can we can show it. In fact, we can add class because that's what we need to do of active. Now, I'm pretty sure that's going to work, but there's going to be a problem. You can, if you can let me know in the comments what you think the problem is going to be in this instance, then I will give you brownie points. But if we refresh our page and see that we've where we've added those elements to the page. Inspect, so it's added those uh, active classes to the page. So we can see they're not there then. Added that active class and it's display block, uh, display block because that's what we added in the, uh, in the style inspector. So we've got that, remove active class on all tabs. We want to remove the active class, but we want to do it before we add the active class. So if we um, use our, so what we want to do is find all of the um, bodies. So let's do that here. Const tab bodies, <laughs> bit of a rubbish name there. But what we want to do is go tab body. Uh, find all of tab body. Cool. Um, let's keep this consistent because we've used that thing there and as annoying as it is, I mean, if you're in control of your project and you're happy to like set aside classes or whatever, you, you know in yourself that you can... Um, what's going on here? Oh, I see they're not inside divs. So let's remove that. That. Um, and let's actually add our data attribute here. Uh, you could probably use classes, but tab, tabs body. True, because we need a value. Right. And then we can duplicate, copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, we want to remove the active class. Move. Uh, remove, and let's just double check the ID. That was tab three, and that's tab two. Cool. So we have data tabs body now. Knock back to the code. Data, data tab body. That's annoying. Again, I think this is a developer's sort of mind, but like we're, it's almost like o o OCD that we want things to be clean, things to be consistent, things to be optimized. So that's why that sort of thing bothers me. Cool. So we have access to our tabs body and what we can do here is go um, all of the tabs bodies, really don't know that name, uh, remove class active so and let's just check that works so we should now see a pretty oh look yes it's working because we can see it here in the inspector but you can see that it's removing the class and but we don't have any differentiating content to be able to denote Oh, they're all hidden now.
three. Cool. Cool. Publish that. It should all work now. Um, remove active class and all tabs. We know that. Add active class element. ID. We, we've done that. So, I mean, look how many lines of code that is. I don't know how, whether you've built a tab system before, but um, that's essentially how simple a tab system is. It's not, it's not rocket science. So we built our tab system. Um, let's now talk about how, what this whole video will be about will be the module system we want to build. So we want it so that every time we use this tab system on, as it stands currently on different pages, that we don't have to worry about writing any extra JavaScript. Um, we don't have to worry about the JavaScript firing on, um, on the page at all when it's not needed, if it's not there, um, because right now this will just fire. Granted, this stuff won't fire on the on the until a click has happened, but at the same time, um, this could be anything. This could be any sort of JavaScript. So we just built a simple example so that we can demonstrate what's going on. So if you remember, we added a data module tabs um, tabs attribute on on our uh, on our element here, or our component here, or our module here, and um, we let's run through what exactly what we want to do well we want to find because you might have multiple modules on the page that's why we went we've gone with the consistent thing here you might have multiple modules on a page and so if we had a tab system here it could be a footer with you know like i say the date changes or something like that um we want to be able to use the value here to determine which function to fire. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just really think about what we want to do here, right? So we want to find all modules, um, data, mod is it module or modules? Module, module on page, right? So we want to find all of them. Um, we want to, loop through and get the value use the value to fire a specific function um that in i mean i i'm, I'm going to add a few items here but that's essentially what we want to do knowing what i know in the code uh there's a few other things so um, well, I mean, let's actually, let's just talk about how we're going to, we're going to, how we're going to do this, right? So I'm, I want to essentially create a big object. So let's just call this modules. And this is going to be an object that we, we can have access to here. Brownie points, if you can already see what's happening right here, but this is where all of our functions are going to, are, are going to live um you might um you know you might name this something like the project itself because you'll you'll have access to this um in fact what we're going to do is go window dot modules um because this is quite a generic name web, web flow modules i don't know something you can name this whatever you want and we're going to create an object from that as opposed to a thing now we can we should actually let's just look into that we should have access to this component now or this empty object on the page there we go there's our empty there's our empty um window now all that there it is there so we have access to it um and this is where we're going to contain all of our um functions okay and and that's how we're going to be able to fire these these certain functions based on the values. So, the value of our um, our data module was tab, was it? Back here, tabs. And inside of this object, we're going to put tabs. 
and this is going to be a function. Uh, if I use our console log here, I can demonstrate how we can fire this function within the module. So we'll use the classic hello. Um, and we fire this function in, in several ways. We can go um, tabs and then fire the function like this. We can go um, like this, which is kind of, and then fire it like that. And, which, and this is the kind of method we're going to use here because this can also be, well, let's demonstrate that. This can also be a value um, that we set. So, uh, and if we go const value equals tabs, so we've got three ways to fire it there. Publish this. And there we go three times we've fired that hello. So let's remove this now. And what I'm going to do is just move my code inside of this. So what we'll find now is that this tab system is broken, will not will not work anymore, because we haven't fired this code. So Let's start off by finding all of the data modules on the page, right? So const wf Let's turn this off. Turn this off. Um, equals, now we're going to find data module and that's it, I think. If we console log that dot length, then I would expect this to equal one. But this could be multiple. That's the thing. That's the point I'm trying to get here. One. This could be, you know, you could have here sort of, um, I don't know, copy. We've spoken about this before. Whoops. Copy right date we can have another function here that's uh, got a copyright date in there and i've just have all of our all of our javascript in here what would be another one um scroll scroll to this could be all javascript that you've written here and we've got access to all these functions which are namespaced in the, inside of this uh, object so that. let's once again use our convention so we found all of the data modules on the page right now we want to loop through them and fire the respective function that they're they're uh they're denoting so if we were going to do copyright date in fact what we can do is get it working and then i can show you um show you how that works right so Webflow modules, um, and we can use a function called each, and this gives us access to an index and an uh, like an item in the index. So um, again, console dot log. I, I like to console log here one because obviously it's clearly showing you um, you what's happening as we do it, but also like from my perspective, it validates what's what's kind of happening so we've written some proper whoops go missed off that um it's just making sure that like what what is happening is actually happening so just to go back here we've we've console logged in fact you know what we're going to go uh, index um we're looping through each of the data modules and it's firing this function on each iteration. So we get access to the item. The, the this could, again, these can be anything you want. We could go this, we could go mod, and then these obviously need to be updated as well. Um, and then we're console logging the actual uh, element that it's found inside of that 
um, jQuery object. So let's go here. And we've got our module here, and then the item is zero. And if you don't know this, the uh, arrays actually start from index zero. So that's why it says zero there. But again, if we had 20, we could have 20 um, modules here, and they would sh kind of show up. So now that we have access to the module, let's store that. Um, and we want to get the data. We want to get the data attribute of the module. So we can do that with plain old JavaScript module data set. Um, what is it? Module. Cool. Plain old JavaScript. And again, let's just console log just to keep this validation system going that we've got. Tabs. So it doesn't take a genius to work out what we're going to be doing now. Um, if we go window, so we don't need to we don't need to say window because that's the root object. Um, but just in case, you know, we can go like this. Um, we can go like that, or we can go window it really doesn't matter uh, it, really, it it does matter actually if we were to use if this was to be used inside of a function which changes the scope of this maybe i'll get into that in another video but for now don't worry about it um uh, we would need to you know specify window so let's just keep it there just to uh keep things neat and tidy so on each iteration we're getting the data set module which is tabs um, we're finding tabs within WF modules and we're firing that function. And wonderfully, all is well, we have this working. And remember, this will only function, this will only fire if it finds it on the page. If it doesn't find it on the page, like you can see, we've got a console log here with copyright, and we'll just get into that now. But these aren't firing. We're not seeing a console or copyright. But what we can do is we change this to copy uh, right. Is that how we spelt it? Copyright date. And save that. Publish this. Then we should see copyright date. There we go. Copyright in the in the console there. And that, I mean that's essentially what I, I wanted to uh, show you, the nuts and bolts of it. Um, <clears throat> we can remove that now. We we'll probably remove, remove all these. Um, and this is I mean this is essentially what 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 it is like this is the code here and you're just creating an object and denoting what um what functions you want to fire here and, and what happens in them so now we've got a kind of clean way to keep all of our javascript uh code and the components and the, the the javascript that makes these components work we've got them all tucked away neat and tidy in the footer of the of the custom code um section of the of the website Okay, so here I am again. As you can see, I've transitioned into the darkness. Um, I was just sitting here looking at the code that I wrote um, earlier, and I noticed a problem that we completely that I completely skipped over. Hence the the change in uh, in ambiance. Um, the final change we need to make to this uh, piece of code here uh, to explain the best I can, because we're going to be talking about the context of this. Um, shortly is that we fire this function but this is still finding all of the tabs on the page so this is still just going to run like we did before we're not really adding much so it's going to find all of the tabs on the page and it's still going to work and that's fine um, but we're really opening ourselves up to a, to a headache of you know potentially two tab systems on a page you know um if you want tab systems on the same page so we need to re remedy that okay so 
we're going to be talking about this and like I say, this and the context of this. The first thing we want to do is once we've looped through the modules here, we have access to that module. We want to pass this. We want, we want to only affect this instance of the module. If there was two on the page, we would go through one and we want to we want to bind the click events to that instance of the module. If we go through it again, we want to bind the click of the instance of that um, module to the, to the um, to the tab system. Now, you might think that's like duplicating like code or duplicating processing power. But the benefit of that is, is that if we had a tab system that says I don't know. It adds a different. Um, it adds a different kind of class. Let's say it adds a different kind of class, so um, it changes the color. I don't know. It's a rubbish example, but we could then part. We could then add options onto the onto the tab system. So it could be something like on this tab here, we have a data attribute of um, data tab um, color equals blue I don't know and then we use and then we use that somewhere in our thing so we will have access to the unique instance and then we have if we have another one then then this one might not have it and we can utilize that so um, it, it gives us the flexibility to kind of um, do better things when we have access to the specific instance of the module so we want to do that um, we could pass it the module so we pass this function the module and then we receive it in here and then we can just change that to mod like that and this will work and just to run through quickly before we test we're only finding the tabs uh inside of the the module we're only finding the body inside of that module and this will and like i say this will still work oh look we have two here see and then we're only affecting the one instance a better way i think to do it um a, a more universal way to kind of um make this a bit cleaner and a bit more extensible is to pass the context of this and we want to be able to go like that and this all still work now because this isn't a jquery object um we're gonna have to remove those dollars to denote that it is just a normal uh, component. So let's find out what this is. Um, we want to modify the context of this to be the module because if we backed actually let's undo that for one moment and let's find out what this is. And we can leave that there. Console.log this. So right now the context of this is window. Um, we want to change the context of this to be our module. Um, and so we can revert that back there and do this. Um, so how do we change the context of this? Well, we have a few different methods um, and the, there's three uh, uh, functions we can use, three, three methods we can use uh, the JavaScript gives us access to is bind, call, and apply. Um, bind you would use as a callback. So um, an example here would be um, uh, if we had a function, I don't know, if we broke that out and you would do uh, handle, uh, click, or something like that, and you'd go bind, and then you'd pass in whatever that context might be. It, will change. it won't be this anymore. It would be whatever you whatever you decide it for it to be we don't worry about it too much but we what we this is not a callback we are calling the function so we need to use either call or apply and there's very ve there's no difference I don't, I don't think between call and apply it's just call um i think you pass an array of oh, okay okay so call you pass in a comma separated list of values so you can see that food accepts name and price so when we call food we can we pass in name and price as separate parameters and then when we re reference this it will be whatever we set it to whereas apply it's uh it's a it's an array of yeah so it's an array of 
items as the uh, as the arguments that you pass to the function. I'm I think core is a little bit nicer here, but we're not passing it anything, so um, we can just leave it like that. So we are calling. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong terminology. We are firing call um, on the WF modules tabs method, and we are changing the context of the context of this to mod, right? And I know something's going to break here. We've we've got con console log this. If we refresh the page, it's still the window. And we've got another error there, but I'm just uh, let's find out what that is. Tabs is not defined. Tabs, tabs, tabs. Oh yeah, that's why. Um, okay, that's what we want. Let's just just t t for sanity's sake, let's just refresh this console so it's still the window now that is to do with these types of functions which are called arrow functions and they were, they were introduced in um, 2017 I think um, and they're a way to write functions whereby um, they look a lot cleaner they look a lot simpler but they do not containerize the context of this right so if you're going to map, we've called this, it's almost like it's leaking out, and I'm using terrible terminology here, but it's leaking out and getting the the highest most um, context of this. So um, I would assume, I, I don't know, I'm just rattling off the top of my head here. I would assume if we put a function in here that's written the old way, then that would contain the um, context and the function of this would be that function. I'm not going to do it now. Um, it might be an experiment that you try, but there's probably a way to do it. The, what we're going to do is we're going to change it to an old school function like that, which actually holds the con the context of this. We refresh. There we go. And that's what the context of this is. And you can see we've got that data attribute tab there and we can change them as normal. So we can remove the this now, the console log. Um, and just double check everything's fine. I mean, everything works and that's fine. And so now when if we have separate functions and probably these should all be that just to kind of keep it clean and, and consistent, um, each function will have its own context of this, which will be the module. And, and then you have access to all the individual kind of attributes, the individual classes, the, the different kind of things that um, might exist on that specific instance of the module. There we go. So you can rejoin past Sam now. Um, and just bear in mind that anything I might have said from this point onwards, uh, please take this into account, the, uh, the context of this. We have a... Uh, we have a we have a situation here where we want to potentially fire these functions from an embed um, or from like a CMS value or something like that. Now I don't have the CMS uh, the CMS uh, plan on this on this site here, so but we'll we'll run through it theoretically. Um, this is this is awesome. This is great um, for just kind of automatically firing these these things and keeping it very succinct and and all the rest of it doesn't mean that we still can't fire these functions from other methods now actually let's add our copyright date of function um, actually let's go hello world what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a string and console log Hello. Uh, let's use modern JavaScript because we are in 2020. Hello. String. Um, we're going to, when we fire this function, when we pass it a value, it's going to fire the string. So jumping into our project and if I think we already created one, didn't we? Here we go. So we've got our HTML embed element here. Um, if this is inside of a, a, a CMS collection or, or something like that, then you can of course you know that you can pull in CMS values from the um, 
you can pull in CMS values into the embed tag. So if we go into, if we have a script here, then we still have, um, I've forgotten the name of it already. Like I say, we still have access to our window object here. So this would be where we would have fire, you know, use the value from the CMS. It could be, it could be the name of the function. So, um, you know, and you could fire like put the CMS value there and fire that like that. So we could have a way of being, um, you know, selective which functions we fire from the CMS. But what we're going to probably do here is go hello world, and then you use the CMS value just in this in this part of the code here. So um, put my name, save and close, and then publish. Uh, hello world of undefined. Let's have a little look. WF modules. Hmm. Actually, I didn't foresee this, but we're going to, what we're going to do, because we've put it in the footer, my guess is that this is loading before the footer has a, had a chance to load. So what we're going to do is actually place this in the header. And this is fine because we're not, we're not firing off any, um, we're not firing any functions. So all this is doing, um, is all this is doing is just placing the code in in the header and we're not we're not like render blocking or doing anything like that we know it's not going to be fired until it's needed uh, on the page so if we come back to here and fire that there we go hello sam because at this point in the page which is towards the top our our list of functions is not ready yet so there we go I think we're done. Um, I think we covered everything there. Um, I think you know. Let me know what. Let me know what you think about this sort of method or this kind of um, way of of doing things. Like like I say, we're 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 trying to keep the code in one place. So you always know where your uh, JavaScript is, where the JavaScript you're writing. Uh, let me know if this helps you. Let me know if this kind of. I'll put this code in the comments. Um, just so you can use it. I mean, I'd recommend that you type it out yourself, but let me know if you'd use this. Let me know if this is a, a, a like a, a valid solution or, or to, to a problem or whether this problem doesn't actually <laughs> exist at all. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that we needed to cover here, but I think we're good. I mean, we've got our tab system working. We've got another, we've got another function firing from an embed component. Uh, we're able to pass it values and things like that. Let me know in the comments if I've missed something. Uh, let me know if there's anything you want me to cover or whether there's a use case or scenario that you can kind of see this working, but don't quite know how you might make it work in this format or something. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in on this one. Like I said, and, and let me know again about the, the format of this one as well. Like I say, I was trying to speak my mind uh, throughout the whole episode to uh try and give you an idea what's going through my mind did i did i jump over something you know did i go too fast over something else um but yeah until next time happy no coding <laughs>